Some of the content covered may be graphic in nature. Viewer discretion is advised. We've all been warned about the dangers of hitchhiking. There are countless horror stories of abduction, sex trafficking, and even murder. Still, for some reason, the thought that it couldn't happen to you still exists. What if you became a part of one of those stories and lived to tell about it? That's exactly what happened to a woman named Colleen Stan, whose life was forever changed on March 19, 1977. This is the story of the girl in the box. So basically, this would be the summary. Cool? Mm -hmm. Everybody's on the sounds, yeah. sounds good, yeah. All right, so on May 19th, 1977, uh, Colleen Stan was hitchhiking. <laughs> hitchhiking. All right. On May 19th, 1977, Colleen Stan was hitchhiking from Eugene, Oregon to a friend's house in Northern California. She was picked up by Cameron and Janice Hooker. Stan claimed that she felt confidence... Stan claimed that she felt confident because Cameron's wife and baby were in the van with him. So she felt comfortable. She didn't feel all weird, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, right. Calm the fuck down, John. Well, we only have 19 minutes. You just said 25. Yeah, but we spent a minute around. All right. Once they were on an isolated part of the road, Cameron pulled over, put a knife to Colleen's throat, and then locked a wooden box over her head. And basically the box was designed to prevent light, prevent sound, prevent air. And this is kind of a weird way to put it, but think of like Pyramid Head from mm -hmm. Silent Hill, just oh, yeah. a, a regular wooden box put over her head. So after being kidnapped, Stan was taken back to the couple's home where she was tied up, strung up, and repeatedly beaten by Cameron all while the couple had sex in front of her. So she was tortured and locked in a box under their bed for 23 hours a day. And she was basically just given scraps of cold food, and she would have to go to the bathroom in a bedpan. And she was just laid there, forced to keep silent with this box on her head, not really ever knowing what's going on. Um, and in 1978, she was... <clears throat> in 1978, Cameron forced her to sign a contract, basically selling herself into slavery. And he would be her master. Wow. So... Before abducting Colleen, Janice and Cameron had come to an agreement of the terms of, for the abduction. So she knew about this the whole time. That was basically their plan. And she agreed to this. Janice agreed to this because she basically was tired of having Cameron's fantasies acted out on her. So she was the object that he would, I, I don't know what you would call it, but all of his bondage and master-slave fantasies. Was on her. Yeah. So right. she was just tired and wanted it pawned off on somebody else. So as the years went on, Colleen was raped orally by Cameron, but he chose to use various objects on her vaginally and anally, and Oof. he allegedly never had sex with her because it was against the terms that him and Janice agreed to. So, I mean, this was pretty in-depth. Like, she knew what was going on. So Colleen eventually built up trust with Cameron and was soon allowed to leave, have a job. She was able to go home and visit her family. And she never told anyone about the situation because Cameron claimed to be a member of the company which is just an organization. She didn't really know what it was. But CIA. No, 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 not that. But like an organization that is basically, he, he runs in that circle. Don't step outside or we're going to kill you. Gotcha. That's basically what it was. He said, you know, they're going to hurt her. They're going to hurt her family. You can't talk about it. So when she would go home, she just acted like normal. You know what I mean? And she actually brought Cameron with her and introduced him as her boyfriend and her family. There's pictures of them smiling. Like her, So her family had no idea any of this stuff was going on. Right. They, she just thought, hey, she just doesn't really talk very much. So anyway, by 1983, Janice was struggling with the situation because Cameron wanted to make Colleen his second wife. So evidently that was the breaking point, the second wife, not any of the other stuff. So she then confessed to Colleen that she'd been abduct she had been abducted and brainwashed from her first date with Cameron. 1984 comes, Janice informs Colleen that although the company actually does exist, Cameron isn't a member. And that was kind of her her way out. She was like, okay, nothing's going to happen. I'm going to leave. Three months after this, uh, Janice reported, or Colleen didn't report him to the police because she said, I'm going to give him some time. Maybe he'll straighten himself out. 
once again, whatever. I, I don't know if Stockholm Syndrome comes into play <laughs> with that. But, um... So three months go by, and Janice actually reports Cameron to the police and also inform them that he kidnapped... <clears throat> that he kidnapped, tortured, and murdered Marie Spanicky, who disappeared in 1976. They were never able to find the body or anything, so the charges were dropped. They couldn't really bring anything on it. But in 1985, Janice testified against Cameron in exchange for full immunity. He was sentenced to 104 years for sexual assault and kidnapping. He was, His parole was denied in 2015, but he is eligible again for another hearing in 2022, which is pretty crazy to think that he's even eligible, but that he also might be out in three years. So once back home, Colleen earned an accounting degree, was married, and had a daughter. Both her and Janice continue to live in California, but they changed their last names. Uh, they, they are not in contact with one another. And this story has basically been, they've made a movie about it, a ton of like different series, uh, SVU, like, you know, the Law and Order, stuff like that. Right. Uh, there's been a book written. It's a, a huge basis for a lot of different type of film and, you know, reading. But yeah, that's that's basically the gist of it. A uh, bit of a wild one this week. Uh, where'd you come up with this? So it, I, I've been down the rabbit hole the last couple of weeks just a ton of different like murder stories history like all this crazy stuff and this one just randomly popped up and i was like man i never heard of that even though it was made into a movie and then what was the movie it was called the girl in the box really and i think it was a straight to tv movie oh okay but because that's why i was like man i thought i would have heard it something like that was crazy but uh i I was gonna say it wasn't the song you know that uh was it no. Pearl Jam? Oh, yeah. No, no, that was uh, Alice in Chains. The ball. Oh, no, that yeah, was right, Alice in Chains. Yeah. yeah. But uh, <laughs> I, no, we actually, a ton of shit for that one. That was a good. good Here's a man in the box. There actually was a there was a song that was a, I don't remember who it was. It said that the lyrics were based on like her situation. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, just after hearing a little bit about it and diving into the details, it was just like holy shit! Like, how do you survive? 23 hours a day and the craziest part is like they had kids they said that she was under the bed at one point where janice gave birth to their second kid wow and the the fact that like he gained she gained trust and they got so comfortable where she was like hanging out with the kids like she'd be like mowing the lawn and the neighbors were like hey you know and she's like i'm just a slave but it's cool because this is my life now you know what i mean but it was so hidden that when the kids would ask like oh you know like where's colleen they would just tell her oh she went home for the night and then when the kids would go to bed they pull her out from under the bed take you know take the box off and just fucking well, go to town you, in in the uh the brief you were talking about like he went to jail right okay so but what why was his wife not put in jail well she she testified against him in in uh, exchange for full immunity to, gotcha. to everything so, Isn't that fucked up? Like she's still she, an accomplice. In a oh, she absolutely is. I mean, but her her whole angle, you know, and I, I'm not there. I don't know. Right. Is she really fucked in the head? Was she right. really like, no, this is cool. But if she really was brainwashed from the beginning, you know, how, how does that come into play with like everything down the line? Because she inevitably, it's a weird way to put a spin on it because she inevitably by the end was like all right no this is kind of fucked up right. she went to colleen and she was like we need to leave like this whole situation is bad yeah but the the crazy thing is like that happened because cameron wanted to marry colleen so hmm. all of that shit like the rape the beating the torture that was fine for her like janice didn't clearly didn't give a shit because she's like it's not happening to me now but the fact that he was like, I want to make her my wife, and she was like, fuck this, we're out. Like, that's the breaking point? You right, know what yeah. I mean? Like, So, yeah, I, I agree. T territorial, you know. Yeah, okay. yeah, but like, I wholeheartedly agree. Like, this whole making deals with criminals, is well, that shit has got to stop. And the other thing, the like, lawyers... Well, yeah, old. I was like watching something on the mafia, like uh, Frank Collada, I think. He was like a guy that killed people, and he's, he's out just doing spoken words at places. Because... Well, also, Oh, go ahead. Yeah, because he made a deal. 
I mean, Sammy the Bull made a deal. Yeah. He got out, and then he still got, he still went back and did crazy shit oh, with because they don't selling know ecstasy any, and stuff. They don't yeah. know anything. Else. And also, the lawyer could easily just play it out to say they were they were fear they feared for their life. Oh, absolutely. And you know that'll play out easily in court, to where like, all right, well, we'll we'll give her you know immunity or whatever. So, but. all of that being said, there's no mention of the kids. Like, your father had the woman who was a friend of the family at the time. He, you now know you're old enough that you know. Right. Like, he tied her up. He tortured her. He beat her. Her mom had a hand, or your mom had a hand in it. How the fuck does that make you look at your mom? Right. Like you testified and you got out of it, but you still went through it. You went through were, with that shit. Were there any neighbors in the area that? I mean, could the could have someone have done something? To try, could she have tried they, to? They said the way that she portrayed herself outside was like, no, I'm just hanging out. Like she would hang out with the neighbors. Like. Hey, this is cool. It's great. Family friend. Like we're having a, like I said, she went home with Cameron right. to her own family to like hang out and said, this is my boyfriend, Cameron. And they were like, oh, he's so nice. You should come around more. Like so she had every opportunity yeah, to, and, to get and, out of it. And she yeah, was well, here's scared. Some, I mean, and what's like the path that someone goes down from like having their head locked in a box to like taking them to their family and being totally okay? Dude, I mean, isn't that what Stockholm syndrome is? Like, you fall in love with your captor. I'm pretty sure. I believe that, that's. I think I, that's. I the hope name I of didn't it. like reference that the wrong way during this the talking about. But I'm pretty sure that that's what that is. I think that's what it is. Uh, Stockholm syndrome: feelings or trust, feelings of trust or affection felt in many cases of kidnapping or hostage taking by a victim toward the captor. So, so I yeah. would I would say that's probably like the most extreme example. That, right. that you could get right there. Right. I mean, well, it's happened numerous oh, yeah, times since then. Absolutely. You know, in the news, look at the three girls right here around Cleveland. I mean, granted, they didn't fall in love with their captor, but still, yeah, there. Were, I'm sure there were some opportunities that they somebody could have gotten out of that house. I think. I think. Yeah, I don't. I mean, like for seven. Was it seven years? Ten no, years. Ten years. Like over ten. Yeah, over ten years. Yeah. And I always I, wondered about that. I think at some point though, like you kind of become complacent, right? And you essentially just start to like compartmentalize and like deny, like, no, this isn't really that bad. Like right. this isn't yeah. really happening, you know. They and, get used to it. Yeah, exactly. Right. It, it becomes almost like a routine. It's a new life, right. For them, and right. which is so fucked because right. how long does it take for that to set in? Like, right. is it a year? Is it five years? Is right. it? I mean, look at the dates on here. It also. Oh, go, no, naive. Go it just depends on how naive somebody is. You know, if you have a somebody has a domineering personality, and they they take on someone that's you know like you're fucking saying a you know someone that has a um, very naive and gullible, and you know you can you know uh, really play on that as someone that has a, a personality that can yeah just, just very impressionable impressionable and can deceive per- yeah you know. So this was she was abducted in '77. And she didn't escape till 84. So for seven years, yes, uh, you were in some way, shape, or form. I, I, dude, I mean, it's just fucked. Like, yeah. the whole situation is fucked. And she actually, one of the times that she went home, and I don't, I don't have the date because I didn't find it that important. But one of the times she went home, Cameron was like, you know what? I gave you too much trust. Right. You need to come back home. And he, like, brought her home, and he put her back in the fucking box for, like, three years. Like, three additional years. So where's the where's the point where you're like, wait a minute? Yeah, it's you like, know. oh, man. Like, you were by yourself with your family, and this dude is right. nowhere around you. Well, one thing one thing that will prevent that from ever happening nowadays, at least the first portion of that, is you said they, he, she was hitchhiking, right? Right. That's one thing no one does anymore. Well, you'd be fucking surprised, though, yeah. man. Think yeah. about it. Hitchhiking? Like, yeah. Oh, man, I thought that was a... That's a thing in the... I mean, no, I'm sure it still it's happens, still, but... It's still around, dude. I not mean, it, like it was in the 60s and 70s. No, I mean, definitely not not like 60s and 70s. Because I think people nowadays are just definitely a lot more like, hey, this is it's really fucked right. up. The, like, what it, can happen? Both, on both ends. The, yeah. the driver knows that they can get someone in the car that knives them, you right. know? Yeah, the... Uh, the the movie is uh, Girl in the Box. Uh, came out in 2016. It was a made-for-TV movie, um, but it doesn't say what network it was on. But it, I think it, it was either like Sci-Fi or Lifetime. Like it was like one of those yeah. kind of one-off. You know what's weird about all these dudes like that do weird things like this? They all look 
very similar. They're like the, the side part with longer hair and big fucking glasses. Well, I mean, that was the 70s. That was fucking everybody. <laughs> All right, so you got a point. But I, I mean, yeah, that's the that's basically the gist of it. You know, 70s was not, you know, picked up by a family. Which, yeah. I mean, if you're if you're hitchhiking and you see a baby in the car or and you know, a baby, a mom and a dad, you're going to be like, "Hey, I feel about as safe as I can get. It's not some fucking hillbilly, right. you know, trucker, nothing like that." Right. And instead, you get pulled over. Dude puts a knife to your throat. Wife just sits there like, "No, this is cool. Like, let's." I can't remember. Did you uh, did you see Monster with Charlize Theron? No. Where she played that hooker. There, the she ends up killing in the movie. Um, I forget his name. Scott Wilson, who played Herschel on Walking Dead. He picks her up in the movie, but I can't remember if he's picking her up to have sex with her or he was just trying to be nice. And she ends up killing him anyway. But like. Or even the reverse where you pick up somebody and uh, you're like, and you don't know them from Adam. You know, the one time I remember me and uh, one of our friends, we went down to Mountaineer to play at the casino. And <laughs> you, there's a guy, there's like a bridge down there. And the guy, there's a guy standing at the, the bridge. He's like, hey, can you give me a ride across the bridge? And I'm sitting in the front seat. I'm like, no. <laughs> and... <laughs> The guy I was with, he was like, yeah, come on in. And so there was me in the front seat, this random dude in the back seat, and then one of our other friends who's no longer with us um, is in the back seat too. And this guy is like telling us all these crazy stories about how his wife kicked him out and all this shit. And I'm like, holy shit, who the hell did we pick up here? And then like he gets in the, he gets out of the car at the convenience station. I'm like, go, get out of here. Like, <laughs> But yeah, it's just, you never knew who you're going to pick up on the side of the road. Um so, but yeah, uh, the, and he, he's eligible for parole. In, 2022. Yeah. And or, he, he already applied for how, 2015. How old is he now? Uh, I, I, he's got to be old, older. He's probably 60s, 60s or 70s. Yeah, let's say yeah. 60s or 70s. Well, I mean, hopefully they don't let him out. I mean, I, I just don't understand, like, how, how the fuck are you eligible for parole? Well, they gave him 104 years. Right. That's what I mean. 104 <laughs> years I mean, and you serve 40 Right. years you know what i mean like they got to make room dude i mean that's the thing is that there's just so the prison system is so messed up right now with what and who is in there that like you know people are getting these really long ridiculous sentences for maybe something that's not as important as something like this yeah somebody sells right. weed and gets 30 years yeah. and they right. can't get parole right but then yeah. this dude yeah, dude like i from all these different stories and shit that I've been listening to lately, there are so many people that, for one, this dude murdered his cousin, and it was a really fucked up story. Like, basically, the dude's baby, his four-year-old kid got murdered, mm -hmm. and then, like, this dude was, like, writing letters and harassing the family, but they never found out who it was, and they suspected the cousin. So the dad was like, fuck it. On fucking TV was like, I'm going to kill my cousin when I see him. Mm -hmm sure as shit what does he do kills his cousin they keep getting letters so they're like okay it's not the cousin this dude's in prison does five years and gets out so anyway yeah the story of uh, colleen stan uh the movie is called girl in the box and uh there's actually a book uh she wrote with someone and so you probably find it on amazon or yeah whatever. it's it's all you can just search for it. it's very readily available all right well thanks for the story yeah all right for uh Steve Gibson, Dan Rady, Jason Markovitz, uh, I'm John Mazinski from Mistake on the Lake. This is Type 3 TV, over and out.